Okay, great. Yeah, I'm, good. Yeah, I'm already okay. loving this this slide. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Anuj Jain, and as you can see, we have a deep ocean here, and we are doing deep learning uh, for El Nino prediction, and it's quite a deep topic. So we're going to go through what do we have and what we look forward to. So, right. uh, so we have a graded SST data, uh, which is uh, on that left figure, you can see there's like a huge red blue on the right side. So how Alino works is basically we have an unusual uh, SST anomaly over the tropical Pacific region. And uh, you can see the right graph, uh, which has the Alino uh, anomaly index over the time. So the red regions kind of suggest that there is a significant Alino. So what we have is machine learning tools, cloud server, and then uh, what we want to do is predict the Alino using different methods and compare them uh, using the accuracy. And obviously we have the wonderful team uh, and we did a teamwork here. So here is the brief uh, overview of what the methods we used and uh, so particularly the baseline method we use is the uh, persistent method, which assumes that anomaly would remain constant over time from a particular data point. So assuming that 12 months would remain same. Uh, now, second, we had a principal component analysis. So this uh, briefly breaks down your data set into different components, and we take the major components uh, from them to predict. So uh, we did 32 PCAs, which covers like 80% of our variance. And then we use LSTM. So LSTM is generally used for time series data, which uh, analyzes the sequence orders. And uh, then we use 20 epochs. So epochs is just a run which uh, analyzes the whole data. So it runs 20 times here. And then we have the CNN network. So this is kind of a bit more complex, which creates a filter matrix. So this filter goes over the data uh, and keeps updating its variables so that it gets better on prediction. And finally, we use this matrix uh, in our prediction. And finally, we have convolution LSTM, which is the most complex one we used. So this is kind of the merge uh, concepts of both above two. And here we use the filter layer in CNN, but since uh, it keeps that memory of the previous data set, uh, it takes more time and space. So we are using 10 epochs here instead of 20, but probably it works more better. So go so next. Uh, so this was the description and these are the results we got. So we chose 300 random data points over the whole 165 years of data set we had. So uh, you can see the y-axis, which has RMSC, which stands for root mean squared error. And on the x-axis, we have months. So we want to make prediction up to 12 months. So the blue line on the top is our baseline method, so which is performing worse for longer duration. Uh, the red dotted line is the standard deviation. Uh, and the black dotted line is the standard deviation and the red is half of that. So we can see that our three methods are well below the baseline method, which is good. Uh, also, they kind of flatten out uh, after a point. So this makes our method reliable for even longer terms, maybe. Uh, also, we have that convolution LSTM method, which has uh, a good predictive power up to like four months since it is well below the half standard deviation line. So the orange line we see is the best one we did. And uh, uh, the index we are using is the Nino 3.4 index, which covers the latitude range of five degrees south to north and longitude range in 192 to 40. 
So that was our result. And uh, this is what the improvements can be in future. So we did take SSTs for now, but uh, we also wanted to take SSH, which was on a different grid. So that comes from atmospheric data. So we might want to include that in future. Uh, things like wind speed, pressure, wave velocity, those are kind of variables which do affect Alino, but are not here right now. Um, also, why do the methods perform this way? So we can improve those methods for our longer predictions, given that we do uncover the real concept, like the black box behind those machine learning methods. So I think uh, when we tried it once again now, just a few minutes ago, we did uh, a different type in convolution and STM and EOF, uh, which kind of have a different result. So that's kind of improving our reliability for distant future and it keeps going on. And uh, finally, collaborating, we can have a uh, better understanding of long-term impacts of what predictions look like and what Unlino can do uh, for us. So that's it for now. Uh, thank you, everyone.